All right, guys, we're here with the 2024 Polestar 2, and this one here is the performance model. So it has a whopping 350 kilowatts worth of power and a very generous 82 kilowatt hour battery pack, meaning that you have plenty of opportunity for distance and for fun. Uh, includes a couple of cool features like launch control and a ton of other benefits that you'll see shortly. Now with this review, we're gonna cover off a couple of the user-friendly features first, then we're gonna do another separate review for the performance side of the car. So if you're here strictly just to find out about the performance figures, zero to 100 at times, cornering, that kind of stuff, this isn't the review for you. But if you wanna see things like boot space, interior comfort, the tech and all the other things that come with the day-to-day -day usage of this car, then this is definitely the right place for you to be. So starting with the front, you have the Thor Hammer daytime running light design that is synonymous to the Volvo group. That is carried over, so you have that there and leans into here. Fog lights at the bottom, plus your LED headlights as well. You have a very smooth, flat finish, as you would expect from an EV. The lack of uh, ventilation from a grill is not as much of an issue for an EV. Camera at the front, because it does have a 360 degree camera system, as well as other driver assistance features such as radar or active cruise control, which helps keep the distance with the car in front. When you program it to 80, it will hold the speed at 80 unless the car in the front slows down to 70 or any other speed. Front parking sensors to make it super easy to park in tight parking situations or maybe your garage or shopping center. And one of the cool things with this, just hold on two seconds there and I'll pop the, bo the bonnet open. Is when you pop the bonnet open, you actually have some additional storage. So if you're going somewhere and you don't really have something that's massive that you'd want rolling around in the boot, you actually have some pretty generous space in here to do any of your storage that you need through there. Now, this area here is incredibly handy for a number of things. So let's say, for example, you have your charging cables, maybe you have a type two to type two cable that you carry around with you to help you charge in public areas. You can chuck it here or you can chuck it in the, in the underfloor space in the boot. You have a road safety triangle. So if you do have a puncture, a roadside emergency and you need to pull over, you have a safety triangle, as you would expect with any European car. And you also have the Polestar repair kit, which is just there. So it is all purposely made to fit nice and neatly and nice and snugly. So you're not having to worry about any of that rolling around or moving around. Now it is insulated, so it will help keep some of the noise out as well, but also help keep some of the heat out. Uh, so that is a couple of cool things with the design on the Polestar 2. This is also where you would top up things like your windscreen washer fluid if you needed to. Uh, so it's just a nice, easy, well-designed area, uh, which is a big shout out compared to some of the other brands that have an EV, but an underbonnet area that's just cluttered and is not usable with anything else that you need. Moving to the side of the car, you are met with these massive 20 inch alloy wheels, which just fill the guards really, really nicely and make it, give, make it have a very strong on-road presence uh, and give it a very nice overall design and shape. So even though it's made off a SUV platform, uh, you definitely don't feel like it's a SUV in the overall design. It's very sleek, sporty, stylish, while still being, as you would expect from the Swedes, very minimalist and functional. So great design there from the guys at, Vol at Polestar. With the door handles, again, they're just a standard door handle and that's the thing that I absolutely love. Everyone keeps coming up with these fancy weird door handles that don't work in snow or don't work in certain other conditions or if you have an accident, the firefighters can't work out how to open. Polestar has just given you a standard door handle. Everyone knows how to open it, everyone knows how to close it. And that's the best part about the door handles on this car. Mirrors, very sleek and very nicely designed in that position there. They do have a camera on each of the outer two wing mirrors that form part of that 360 degree imaging that is available with the Pulsar 2. And let's move around to the back and let's show you some of the boot space, plus what it looks like from behind. All right, now with the rear of the Pulsar 2, you have this very stylish 
almost C and half D design on the other side that's linked and interconnected with this light bar that goes across between the two, giving it a very prominent back end that gives it a unique Polestar feel and vibe to it. Rear parking sensors and rear camera are also standard. And let's open the boot because the boot is an electronic lift back rather than a standard boot that you would have on a sedan. So it's a very deceiving rear end that makes you think like it's gonna be a boot, just like the Model 3, for example, but you end up with a very usable lift back instead. In terms of the interior here, plenty of space and there's even underfloor storage available. So you can put things like a briefcase or a you know backpack, your charging cables or anything like that. And this really cool design where if you need to split that big boot, you can pop this up and that will actually halve the space in the back. So shopping, strollers, prams, soccer balls, all of that can stay exactly where you need them to and they're not gonna be rolling around. So makes it very, very convenient and very, very easy to use. Now with the back uh, here, you just push on the remote control that will open and close it remotely, making it a very easy to use boot. However, if you are trying to work out where to actually open it, the handle is just here. So think of the Polestar star, just go straight down and put your hands there and that touch pad there will open and close the boot nice and easily. Nice and easily. Now charging, mind, this car here is a type two charging system. So you just push on this, that will open and give you direct access to the type two charging outlet that will allow you to charge your car on fast charges in the public. It will allow you to charge slow charge at home, your granny charger at home, or a type two to type two at some of the free parking, free charging that's available at shopping centers or car parks. Now we'll do a more detailed review on the actual charging and how to charge the Polestar 2 as a separate video. So make sure you stay tuned for that video. Uh, so for now, let's have a look at the inside. Now moving on to the interior of the Polestar 2 Performance, it is an incredibly comfortable place to be. This particular car also has the optional upgraded zinc Nappa leather seats. Now Polestar says that they have traced the animal welfare traceability of the leather seats to make sure that those cows were in absolute pristine care conditions before they donated the leather that comes onto these seats. Uh, it is a very nice leather and incredibly comfortable. And part of that pack means you also get the seat ventilation, which in a hot, humid Queensland day like today, it's an absolute godsend. Uh, with that combination of interior materials, you have some nice soft touch materials for the rubber around the actual dash on the top of the door handles and some cloth around the speaker grills. Give it an all round premium feel to this very, very nice car. Uh, rather than some of its competitors that can go really quick, but also feel incredibly average and a little bit underwhelming with their interior compared to the Polestar. One of the other cool things is the performance also gets these cool yellow seats. So it looks really, really schmick. Now steering wheel is height and reach adjustable, making it incredibly comfortable if you're trying to find the perfect seating position. Um, now in the past, I wasn't a fan of how the center console sat. Uh, because I drove a Model 3 and I was used to having my leg spread quite a bit and just resting on that center console, which was a lot more lower lying. Now, I've not been in the, in the Model 3 for quite a while. So getting into this time round, I must say that that center console stack doesn't actually really bother me all that much. And the seating position that I've found is actually quite comfortable. So for previous reviews, if you've watched my old Polestar reviews around being a little bit, you know, uncomfortable with that, center section um, look try it again because I actually am finding it really comfortable to be in this car so that's really really good now being European the wipers are on the right hand side and the indicators are on the left hand side really easy to get used to a big digital display in the center here which also brings up your built-in navigation it built, brings in your range remaining for your battery as well as your battery level and it has a digital display in the center here that is actually a modest size compared to a lot of other EVs that have gone for these massive big tablet screens. Uh, so, and it's pretty straightforward in functionality. So it just tells you your range and the information you need. Has your Apple CarPlay, which is wired. There's no wireless Apple CarPlay support in this car. You do have a wireless charging pad at the top here, plus your two USB-C inputs on the top here as well. 
As I mentioned, the seats are heated and ventilated, so that is all done through that center display. And you have a glass roof at the top here that actually doesn't let in all that much heat compared to my previous Model 3. So all in all, it's actually a really nice place to be inside this car. Let's check out the back seat. Now, in the back seat, now this is the one thing that you need to keep in mind with the Polestar 2. It's comfortable if you're an adult that maybe is going up to about six feet. If you're going above six feet, you are probably gonna be brushing the roof a little bit right at the back of where the, the glass roof finishes. Uh, so make sure you do sit in the back and test that space out. The front seat does sit a little bit lower as well. So you can't slide your feet underneath the seat all that comfortably, but you can get your couple of toes in there and have a little bit of extra room if you needed to not ideal if you are on a longer drive. Um, the back door card, however, is finished really nicely. So you have that soft touch material at the top, the Nappa leather inserts, the cloth as well, and a bottle holder down there as well. Plus some seat back pockets if you wanna store any other items there. Air conditioning controls are directly in the center. So you will have some chilly knees if you are that person in the middle. And because it is based off a standard petrol or diesel car, rather than a fully electric platform, you do have that middle transmission tunnel hump, which means the person in the middle is not gonna be all that comfortable on longer drives. So ideally, it's probably a good two plus two car rather than a two and three in the back car. Uh, unless you have small kids, then you're probably okay. With the back as well, you do have a charging port there and heated seats for the outer two seats as well. So you will be comfortable in winter if you are in a part of Australia that gets a little bit colder. Uh, and outside of that, you have some little pocket lights on each of the corners throughout there, plus this massive glass panoramic roof, which just is a little bit nice to let it, a little bit of additional air in and make it look and feel a little bit more open than it actually is. Isofix ports are directly behind the seats, and you also have the top tether points directly behind the seat so that you're not using too much of your boot space. Uh, that being said, they are only for the outer two seats, not for the middle. You have a armrest that comes down in the middle here. Um, so once I slide across here, you'll see me drop it down. It won't be all that clear, so just imagine. But you're gonna have your armrest drop down and you can put your bottle holders or your cups in here. And if you absolutely needed to, you can drop the seat down. Now, uh, I did mention before, sorry, that you have your two Isofix ports uh, on the outer two seats, but the child top tether points are along all three backs. So I just realized they got jumbled up there. So three top tether points behind the seats, two Isofix points, one on either seat for the middle. And you also have a ski port in the back here. So if you're in the back and you're trying to feed something a little bit longer through, just pop that down and get whatever you need straight through here. So ultimate passenger comfort and a little bit of versatility if you are loading the back. But like I mentioned, it is a little bit small in the back of the Polestar 2. So there you have it, guys. That's the quick tour of the Polestar 2. As mentioned, there's a lot I've left off around the performance figures and the performance like options and its inclusions. Uh, so those will be done in a separate video, so don't freak out. Uh, however, there are plenty of other channels that have also covered track related performance figures with this particular car. So I'd highly recommend you also check those out um, because I don't specialize in track reviews. Now with the other sides to this car, we will go into more details around speed of charging, your charging options, what you can do in terms of where you can charge and how you charge and what the costs are. And the reason we've done it in this particular format for this video is where scheduled to have some pretty adverse weather here in Brisbane and we're not going to have time to actually film the charging videos with the current weather that's lined up for this particular uh, shoot. But until next time guys, that's it. Leave your comments in the comment sections. Any questions, any concerns, anything you think I definitely missed <laughs> and anything you think I got wrong, leave them in the comments and can't wait to share more about this amazing car with you.